Back in 1980, as a matter of fact, or thereabouts, I worked for um, the state of Massachusetts, and they had a, I was a database an administrator for a UNIVAC 1100 system, and they had a program that was really quite uh, powerful, it was called Macro, not an assembler macro, but Macro, it was actually a compiler compiler, it would, you could take strings of letters or characters, it was regular expressions, take strings of characters, recognize them, and when you got the string, it would, inter it would, um, it would create a, what do you call it, a, a, a subroutine. So I said, boy, you know, using this program, somebody could write a program that would pass the Turing test. But I realized there was no Turing test contest that one could enter. I said, well, that's pretty good. But I did nothing about it. And I said to my father, let's do that. He said, nah, when I'm dead, you can do that. Well, dad died. And um, a, a friend of mine who had uh, worked for me at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, had sought, founded this nonprofit, got his PhD in, at Harvard under B.F. Skinner. And he came to New York one day uh, for postdoc at, at Rockefeller University. We had dinner. I said, you know, Robert, it would be interesting to have a, non, a, a Turing test competition. And Robert Epstein said, oh, Hugh, that's a wonderful idea. Let's uh, let my organization do it, the Cambridge Center for Behavioral Studies. So I said, okay. Loebner Prize Protocol, which is uh, posted on the web, where it will be explained, it's very simple, but it's not a standard uh, interaction, and the interaction is character by character. It's simple. If the, um, one of the entities, judge, computer, or human, wants to indicate to the other entity that it has pressed the letter A, all it does is create a, a directory, a subdirectory, in a communications folder with the letter A. I mean, the name is the letter. What's good about this protocol is that everybody hates it equally. They all detest it. I had a system once where each person had to write his own program. Somebody used sockets. Somebody used TCP/IP. Somebody used Net uh, uh, Telnet. And the next year, when I came up with this, the one said, "Well, you've got to use sockets." That was the person who used sockets. Or you've got to use Telnet. That's the only way to do it. And that was the person who used Telnet. Or the other one said, "Well, it's got to be TCP/IP." That's because that's the way he did it. So they all hate it equally. And After the contest is won in the text only, which is this, then they go to a contest in which the input to the judges, uh, into the judges and the computers will be audio-visual, so that the programs will have to be able to deal with audio-visual input. They won't have to produce it, but they'll have to be able to speak or think intelligently about maybe uh, videos, AVIs, uh, movies, whatever, pictures and discuss with the judge what they are watching. That will be after the silver prize is won, $25,000 and a silver medal to the first program that can pass the text only. This is text only, just tell a typewriter. After that has been completed and someone has won that, then the grand prize, which is a solid 18 karat gold medal, not gold plated like the Olympics, but a solid 18 karat gold medal and $100,000 to the program that can fool the judge when the discourse, the topic of discourse, includes audio and visual. Actually, I've got so much concern with setting up the contest, finding the, uh, not a sponsors, but the venues. Sometimes, I've, I can, two or three years, I've actually had it in my apartment, that I really don't have too much time or interest in actually examining the transcripts or anything. I mean, once the computer is, the, once the contest is over, I mostly just make sure that the transcripts are posted to the web, and then I go back to being a normal person.